morning, with our family. I greet you all in a wonderful name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a privilege for me to share with you the word again. And uh, guess what month it was. It was count it all joy. Count it all joy. We know that after your faith has been tested, you can count it all joy. And today I want to talk to you about unmeasurable love. I believe you can only experience joy if you know how much God loves you. If you know God's love for you. It's unmeasurable, unfathomable. God loves you with all He has. Now let's pray, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the privilege we have to share the word with, with, with everyone. Father, I ask that you will anoint each ear that listens. That you will anoint my lips of clay. Father, that you will touch each heart in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Now, dearly beloved, I think we all know the scripture, John 3 verse 16, off by heart by now. If not, it's a good scripture to memorize and to know that it doesn't matter what your circumstances is, God loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and whoever believes in Him will have everlasting life, and will not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow! I think this is one of the most powerful scriptures in the Word of God, is to know that God Gave His only Son for you and for me. Yes, you watching here. God gave His only Son for you to die for you on the cross. Doesn't matter what your circumstances is. Doesn't matter what your situation is. Doesn't matter where, where, what position you find yourself in at the moment. God loves you with a passion so, so big that He gave His only Son to die for you on the cross. Why did He do that? So that if you believe in Him, you should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God for that. I don't care what bad situation you're in. I don't care what you, how do you feel, how do you, uh, what do you feel like. God still loves you. God loves you with unmeasurable love. God loves you so much that He gave His only Son. The most precious thing I think every father has is His only Son. I think that's the most precious gift every any father can have. To sacrifice for another is His only Son. To die for you on a cross. Why? So that if you believe in Him, you should not perish but have everlasting life. This kind of love God has for you and me, we find in a Greek word agape which is god love godly love it's the only love you can have if you are god why it's a relentless love it's a love that asks nothing in return it's a love never mind insult or injury only wants the best for the other party it loves anyhow it's a kind of love that love anyhow God created us with love, the human race out of the dust of the earth, out of love. There was a reason God created you and me, dearly beloved, is to walk with Him in love, is to love Him back, to return our love to Him. We can see that in the image of Adam where He created Adam and Eve, and they, he walked with them in the morning breeze, the Word of God says, until he fell into sin. And you know what? When man fell into sin, we didn't catch God of, of God. We didn't surprise God when man fell into sin. God already had a plan before the foundation of the earth. I'll read to you a commentary I got from the Bible. And it says in John 3, 14, He was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, from the beginning, right from the beginning, from the foundation of the world. 
He was the lamb slain and the divine purpose of redemption would fail unless he fulfilled his part in the internal compact that which has been resolved upon for the foundations of the hills were laid must be carried out in all its terrible detail he must be counted as a sin offering and go forth as a scapegoat he must tread the wine press alone and pour out his soul into death yet he was not rebellious nor did he turn back. He rejoiced to do the Father's will. The joy was set before him. He endured the cross. Wow, how powerful it is to know that he was the lamb that was slain. He was the lamb set out to suffer and to die. Even before the foundation of the earth, this plan were made by God. Amen. He made us to be sons and daughters unto Himself. He made us to return our love to Him. Amen. 1 John 3 verse 1 it says, Behold the manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we could be called sons of God, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. You see, it was in the Father's heart to make sons and daughters unto Himself. It was in God's heart. And He poured out with His creation, He poured out all His love He had into this lump of clay. God, you see, had a perfect plan right from the foundation of the earth to set His Son as a sacrifice for sins of the whole human race. To purchase them free, to redeem them and purchase them free. He made us and put himself inside each one of us to present him by his Holy Spirit flowing through us, touching hearts and changing lives. If you receive him, he changes you to his likeness. Dearly beloved, I don't care who you are, I don't care what your situation is, you might feel you've been never loved before, you never had a father who could love you, you could never return love to, to, to a father, or you never had a father. I tell you now, you have a father who are in heaven, who love you with a passion, with a great passion, who poured out his life in his love for you and me. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, to die for you and me. You see now in the great scheme of things, in the great plans God had for you and me, if He's put Himself in each one of us to present Him by the, by the Holy Spirit flowing through us to touch lives and change hearts. Touch hearts and change lives. If you receive Him, He changes you to His likeness. The likeness of Jesus, his mind, his attitude. Now we know the world as we know it is full of competition and full of strife. You know it's a very hard life out there that people are competing against each other, people are abused, people are abusers because of their position, people have no feeling for one another, they step on each other to reach the highest highest notch in life but you know what you and I have the Spirit of God you know there's even uh, strife in churches I've done a test and I've posted on Facebook whom of you has in a church it in your heart to lift up to pick up the injured and the hurt and you should see the replies I got was shocking church we should be the church we should be Christ we should be God we should represent God in love to this world we, we should represent God in love 
towards fellow man. We should represent God in love to our spouses. We should represent God in love to our grandchildren, to our children. Let's see what Philipp, Philippians 2 verse 5 to 9 says. Let this attitude or mind be in you which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it no robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made the likeness of me. And being found in a fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the, until death, even to the death at the cross. But my God also had highly exalted him and give him a name above every other name. Yeah, we see that he was to the likeness of God, who was high and exalted, who was in, in heavens. He stripped himself of his position to come down to this earth, to pay the ultimate price and to be abused by the human being, his own creation. Almighty Creator being abused by his own creation, and died, said to die on a cross, to rise up again, to be resurrected, and to pay the penalty for our sins on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Wow. God has paid the price and He purchased you. He, he became a servant. We, we see that in... in, in, in his reaction to his disciples at the Last Supper, we see it was a custom when they sat at the table and they were eating. And I see Jesus and his disciples sit around the table ready to eat. But as it was custom those days, when you sit down your, your feet, you sit down flat on the, on the ground with your legs crossed and your feet had to be clean. And they started arguing who was the smallest, who were the biggest, so they can find out who must wash the feet. <laughs> I see while they was arguing, Jesus took off his cloak and he put on the, the cloak of a servant and he started washing their feet. Wow! This attitude must be in us. This attitude must be in us while people are seeking position and while people are running this race. Uh, we must say, no God, I will take on the, the garment of a servant and I will serve my fellow brother. I will serve my fellow sister. I will, I'm prepared to wash their feet in Jesus name. You see, this is Jesus attitude. This is what Jesus wants us to do. You see, things of this gospel is opposite to what the world professes. The gospel is, is, turns everything around. If you want, you've got to give. If you want to be high, you must be low. We are servants in the kingdom of God. I see that Cain and Abel, Cain killed Abel. And I see God called Cain, he said to him, Cain, where is your brother Abel? And he said, am I my, Lord? Am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he is. You see, dearly beloved, we should not, that is, that's the spirit of the world doing that. We have the Spirit of God and we should go look for our fellow brother and fellow sister if they are slain, if they are downtrodden, if they are uh, fallen on the wayside, we should go and pick them up. Because God said their blood is calling to me from the earth. And I tell you today we, we should cleanse our hands from the blood of our fellow brothers and fellow sisters. And we should go uh, to the wayside where they are fallen and go and pick them up and help them to be restored in Christ Jesus. This attitude must be in us, the attitude of servanthood, which spread out of love, the love God had for us, the love we should have for our fellow man. 
It's a love we should have for each other. It's a love we should have for the sinner. We see God even love the sinner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see all the gifts in 1 Corinthians 13. It says there, it gives you all the gifts there in 1 Corinthians 14, 13, sorry. It says that it profits us nothing if you don't have love. If you don't have love, you can even give yourself up to be burned to death. But it will help you nothing. If you don't have love, all these gifts is falling away. It's going to the wayside. If you don't have love, if you don't love, it falls away. See, this love of a servant, to be a servant, and to be stripped of your own self, and to be a servant to uh, others, is what God wants us to do. This attitude of Christ Jesus inside of us that drives us, it's a Holy Spirit that drives us to love unconditionally to love even if you are hurt by someone that, that to go back and to love that person with the love God has poured out in your heart the Bible also says love covers a, a multitude of sins it is so if we we'll see what Christ has done on the cross that his love has covered a multitude of sins hallelujah Paul even called himself the chief sinner which were purchased by the, the, the love, love of Jesus Christ, by His blood, His ultimate sacrifice. His love also allows us to grow into grace. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 14, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we all are dead. We said if Christ has died for us, then we have died with Him. You see, the love for Jesus should constrain us to sin. It should contrast, constrain us to follow the world. It should constrain us to be sinful. It should constrain us. It should, it should encourage us because we love Him. And He paid the ultimate price for us in return. Or oh, He's paid the ultimate price for us. This is what we should do in return. Hallelujah. John 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Dearly beloved, I served in a certain congregation for many years, from 1983 until the year 2001. I served in that congregation as, as a member, and uh, the pastor, one pastor in that congregation, the church just grew in numbers. It grew in numbers, it grew in quality. And uh, a while ago I went back there to visit him. And he was picking up the pieces of that church, but they were growing again. Because he went away and he was a pastor, he pastored another church. And I asked him, Pastor, what is the secret of your success? He said, Tians. It's only to love people. It's only to love people. To give a place for the downtrodden. To give a love to those who don't, to feel they don't belong. To give them a place of belonging. To give them love. To feel that they are cherished. To, to feel that they are worth something. If you pour out the love of Jesus into the lives of people, you will discover that they will cherish and love to be in that church. Your congregation will grow. If, if you today feel, I've never been loved, I've been pushed away, I've been downtrodden, I've, I've experienced hurt in my life, I ask you to close your eyes, I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who feel they are are worthless I want to tell them they are the most precious thing because they are worth the life of Christ who died for them on the cross 
ask that you will touch each and every life, every person who listens to this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Dearly beloved, we have a uh, number that will appear at the bottom of the screen. And uh, thank you very, very much for listening to this word of encouragement about love. And know and be aware that Christ loves you. You are precious. Your value is more worth than gold. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.